Hello, happy people of the Algebra 2 world. Um, this will be our second lesson virtually. Uh, our last lesson was about solving logs by taking logs away. Today we're going to be solving by putting logs back in. So our equations last time looked like you had the same log on each side. Today we won't have any logs at all, so we will be putting them in. So. This will work just like we did last time. I'm just going to go through the slides that I normally go through, do the examples with you, and then you can be on your way. So uh, for this first slide, I don't really have to write any examples down, but you might want to pause the video to write it down to know what we're doing and what the problems we will be doing look like. I'll pause now so you can do that. So, as I said before with logs, logs are a great way to solve for a variable that is an exponent, and that's exactly what we're going to do here. Um, we're going to use what we've learned about expanding logs and the change of base formula to uh, kind of help us go along the way. So, when we have problems that look like 6x equals 13 or e to the x equals 14, for the 6 to the x equals 13, we're going to take the log of base 10 of both sides or just the log of both sides. And remember, when we have that base e, we're going to use natural logs. So we're going to use um, the natural log of each side. We're going to start with problems that take the log of both sides. So next up is the steps for those problems. And again, I will do this example on the next slide, um, but you're going to want to write down the four steps. And again, I'm going to pause so that you can pause the video and write everything down that you need to. All right, so our first step is to always isolate the power on each side. So if we were multiplying anything out front or if we were adding or subtracting anything out back, we need to move that over before we can take the log of each side. We have to have that power all by itself. So make sure that the first thing you're doing is getting that power all by itself. Then we can take the log of each side and we can simplify and it's going to look an awful lot like we're using the change of base formula to get a value for x. Because we're finding x as an exponent today, it can be a negative number, so we do not have to check our answers for extraneous answers like we did the other day. So let's do that example of 4x equal, 4 to the x, excuse me, equals 11. So if we have 4 to the x equals 11, we are not multiplying anything up front, and we are not adding or subtracting, so our power is alone. So we can take the log of each side. So I'm going to take the log of 4 to the x and set it equal to the log of 11. So I've taken the log of each side. So the reason we do that is because, remember, when we we're expanding logs, whenever we had a power on our base number, we could pull it out front. So on the left side here, if I pull that out front, I have x times the log of 4 now, and we still have the log of 11 on the right. So to get x alone, what we can do is we can divide both sides by the log of 4. So we're going to get log of 11 over log of 4, which looks an awful lot like your change of base formula, which we've done in the past. And if you go ahead and put that in your calculator, you should get a number that rounds to 1.730. And again, because x this time is an exponent and not part of a log, we don't have to check our answer because negative answers, we can have negative exponents. So we are actually done with this example. Um, All right, so let's go on to the next example. The next example is just like the first, so if you'd like to try it without me explaining it, uh, you can pause the video at this time. Otherwise, if you're still lost as to what we're doing, um, just follow along with me. So if we have 2 to the x equals 5, our 2 to the x power is all by itself. There's nothing being multiplied out front. 
or anything being added or subtracted out back. So we can take the log of each side. So I'm going to take, oop, I have to go back. Uh, I'm going to take the log of 2 to the x and have it equal to the log of 5. Just like before, since I have a power on my log, I can bring that power out front. So I'm going to have x times the log of 2 equals the log of 5. And I'm going to divide each side by the log of 2. So I'm going to get the log of 5 over the log of 2. And if I put that in a calculator, I'm going to get an answer of 2.322. All right. So again, I had nothing out front, took the log of each side, brought my power down, divided, got my answer. All right, let's do one more example and then we'll talk about um, natural logs. So this time we have seven to the nine X equals 15. Our power is still alone, but this time we're going to have a number out front of our x. So we're going to have one extra step, one extra dividing step. So since our power is alone, 7 to the 9x doesn't have anything added, and we're not multiplying anything out front. So I can take the log of each side. So I'm going to take the log of 7 to the 9x equals the log 15. So I'm going to bring that 9x out front. So I'm going to get 9x times the log of 7 equals the log of 15. So then I'm going to divide um, both sides by 9 times the log of 7. So we'll have the log of 15 over 9 logs of 7. Because if we divide by 9 log 7, our 9 and our log by 7 cancels out. So if we put that in a calculator, we get x equals 0 0.155. All right. So that's um, solving by taking the log of both sides. Um, the other thing we can do is we can take the natural log of both sides, and that's going to involve numbers that... Uh, have an e. All right, so if we have uh, e to a power, we're going to take the natural log of both sides. So again, I'm going to pause here so you can write down our four steps. And then on the next slide, we will do the example for e to the x equals 16. So just like before, when we wanted to get our power all by itself, now we want to get the e to uh, exponent all by itself. And then we can take the natural log of both sides and we can simplify and solve for x as before. Um, so let's try that with 4e to the x equals 16. So if I have 4e to the x equals 16, our e part is not by itself yet. So I'm going to go ahead and divide both sides by 4 so that I get e to the x equals 4, dividing both sides by 4. We could not take the natural log yet because then we would have to do some crazy expanding and we wouldn't know what to do. So that's why we're dividing our 4 over first, and now we can take the natural log of each side. So I'm going to take the natural log of e to the x and say equal to the natural log of 4. So what I can do now is I can bring that x power down. So I have x times the natural log of e equals the natural log of 4. Now the nice thing about natural logs, remember natural logs we're asking um, e to what power gets me e, and that would be the first. So the natural log of e is always 1. So I now have x times 1 on this side, which is just x, gives me the natural log of 4. And that is the exact answer, but if we want an approximate, 
answer, we will get x equals uh, 1.386, right? So uh, get your e alone, take the natural log of each side. The natural log of e is always 1 because e to the first is e to the first. All right, so we're going to do another example, but this time we're going to have to do a little bit more work to get the E alone. All right, our last example has 4E to the negative 0.3X minus 7 equals 13. So we have a couple extra steps in here. First, we need to get the E alone, and then we're going to have that extra negative 0.3 at the end. So First thing, if we have 4e to the negative 0.3x minus 7 equals 13, to start getting the e alone, I'm going to add 7 to both sides. So if I add 7 to both sides, I'm going to end up with 4e to the negative 0.3x. I added 7, so it should equal 20. Right? I'm now going to divide each side by 4 because I'm still not quite ready to take the natural log because I have to have e all by itself and I have 4e. So if I divide both sides by 4, I get e to the negative 0.3x equals 5. All right, now I can take the natural log of each side. So if I do that, I'll get the natural log of e to the negative 0.3x equals the natural log of 5. I'm going to bring down my power because I can, and it makes it a lot easier. So I'll have negative 0.3x natural log of e equals the natural log of 5. And remember, the natural log of e is always 1. So I'm going to get negative 0.03x equals the natural log of 5. I'm going to, div to get the x alone, I'm going to divide both sides by negative 0 0.3. So I'll get x equals the natural log of 5 over a negative 0 0.3. And that's what I'm going to put in my calculator is natural log of 5 divided by negative 0 0.3. And if I do that, I get the number negative 5.3. Uh, three, six, five. All right. So I wish I could write smaller on here, but it had to go a little off to the side. But you can see if we get our e alone and take the natural log, we'll still get a number. So remember to, no matter whether the problem has an e or a power with a number, always get that power alone. Take the log or natural log of each side and then simplify to get your answer. So I hope you're all safe, I hope you're all healthy, and I hope you all have a great day.